Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to introduce you to the concept of logarithms. But to understand logarithms we need to take a step back to uh, the concept of inverse operations. Now we know that the inverse operation to addition is subtraction and the inverse operation to multiplication is division and vice versa. But let's just say I have the problem x squared is equal to 100 and I'm asked to solve for x. Now off the top of your head you can probably see that x is equal to 10 straight up. But if we were solving this algebraically, what would we do? Well, we would square root the x squared because that leaves us with x and then we would square root 100 and that leaves us with 10 and then conclude that x is equal to 10. But I guess in terms of what the square root function does, what we're really asking ourselves here is what? To, um, what do we have to square in order to get 100? So the square root function, square root of 100, is 10. Why is it 10? Because 10 squared is equal to 100. Okay, so that's what the square root function answers. It says, what value do I need to square in order to get 100? Answer, 10. Therefore, the square root of 100 is 10. Okay, so that's all right. But what happens if we have a problem like this? 10 to the power of x is equal to 1,000. Now, we do have an answer for that because by inspection we can see that 10 cubed is equal to 1,000. 10 times 10 is 100 times 10 is 1,000. But we don't have an inverse operation um, defined as of yet, which will allow us to simply apply that inverse operation to both sides to work out what x is. Okay, so by inspection we can write x equals 3. No problems at all. So, just by inspection, but if I had the function 10 to the power of x is equal to 500 and asked you the same question, 10 to what? 10 to the power of what equals 500? Well, you couldn't answer that because, oh, well, unless you're particularly clever, you have no way of knowing what x would be so that when I raise 10 to the power of it, it gets 500. So, we use an inverse function. The inverse function in this case is the logarithm function. If I take the logarithm, log for short, of 10 to the power of x, the result is x. Okay, so it undoes a 10 to the power of. If I apply log, I have to squeeze it in here, to 500, then I'll get a value as well. It's 2.7 roughly to one decimal place and I'll explain how we get that in a second. So what are we doing here? If before we, were, we, did, we said the square root symbol means what value do I have to square in order to get whatever's under the square root symbol, how do we look at the logarithm function? Well the logarithm function basically says something like this. So there's the logarithm function. Inside the logarithm function is 500. And the answer is 2.7. So what are we doing here? We're saying that 10 to the power of 2.7 will give me 500. So the logarithm function answers the question, what value would I raise 10 to to get 500? And the answer is 2.7. What value would I raise 10 to to get 2.7? 10 would need to be raised to the power of 2.7 in order to get 500. So there you go. That's basically what the logarithm function does. It's the inverse of raising um, 10 to an unknown number, I suppose, in this case. So how do I get 2.7? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's have a look at this. This picture has been taken of part of a page from what's called a log book or a logarithm book. And these log books were used exactly for the purpose of working out um, what those unknown values were. Now, log books are so old school that even I never used to use log books, but my dad would have used log books. Um, I think the usage of log books goes back to the 17th century or so. 
and continued right up until um, probably the 1960s, maybe the 1970s in some places as well, um, as the way to work out um, those unknown values. So 10 to the power of what will give me 500, consult a log table or a log book. Um, ship's captains or navigators would use logarithm books. Um, so would astronomers. Um, they're used in conjunction with um, trigonometry equations um, to solve problems. Um, so um, navigators would use them for longitude latitude type calculations and astronomers would use them to um, work out distances between stars and so on. So um, that's how they... I, I can't tell you how they're used because I don't know how to use a logbook. Um, I can tell you that just as a, uh, a quick experiment, I suppose, I did put into my calculator 10 to the power of 0 0.7084 and I did get the value um, 5.11 approximately. So, so we can conclude from that that the log of... Um, 5.11 would give us the value 0 0.7084 roughly. I'm not too sure why there's no decimal point here though so it could be that I just don't know how to read the um, logarithm table very well. But yeah that's basically um, how people would have calculated these these answers by um, looking it up in a big book. Uh, but these days, of course, we don't need to use a log table because that entire log table effectively is located within your calculator's memory. So we can just refer to a, a, um, a calculator and punch in the right buttons and we're all good from there. Okay, so let's have a look at the general form of the logarithm. So let's look generally at the idea of we have a base raised to the power of a number and it has a value. The way a logarithm works is by saying the logarithm to that base of the answer, if you like, must be the power. The logarithm to the base, so I'll say that again, the logarithm to the base of the answer must be the power. Okay, so that way we've effectively got a, a, um, a way of getting the base out of the index and into the equation as long as we know what the log function does okay so under particular circumstances it's pretty straightforward let's look at an example say we have 3 cubed which we know is 27 then we can write that in logarithm form as uh, as following log base 3, 27, is equal to 3. Okay, so we have, this is the base, hang on, I'll just put, point it over here, and that's where it appears in the logarithm. This is the answer, and that's where it appears in the logarithm, and this therefore is the power, like so. Okay, so base to the power equals the answer. Alright, so let's have a look at an example of where we might have an unknown that we need to solve. Let's say we've got log base 2 64 as equaling x and we need to work out what x is well we can use we can rewrite this equation 
as a power in power form. So we've got the base here of 2. We've got the power, which is x. Then we've got the solution, which goes over here. So 2 to the power of x equals 64. And then you just need to know what 2 to the power of, of what 2 to the power of what is to get 64. So 2 cubed is 8, 2 to the power of 4 is 16, 2 to the power of 5 is 32, 2 to the power of 6 is 64. So therefore x equals 6. 2 to the power of 6 equals 64. Okay. Let's just say we have a problem the other way around. Let's choose one that we kind of already know the answer to. So, um, 4 to the power of x is equal to 64, say. So we know that x is going to be 3, right? Let's just say we didn't. Let's just say we had no idea. Well, what we might do is we need to say, well, okay, I need to work out what x is. So I'm going to put this in logarithm form. So I go log. Then I pick out the base. There it is there. Pick out the solution. There it is there. And then the power goes on that side. Um, so log base 4, 64 equals x, or x equals log base 4, 64. Now that's it in logarithm form, which is kind of useful if you want to have it, um, if you just need to just put it, um, to work out what x is equal to without having to have a specific number in mind. But of course you might want to work out exact, the exact value um, in this case, it's a whole number. It's three, but you could imagine it might not be. It might be one point one two one nine seven one eight one seven six one nine eight seven two three four five one. It's not in this case, but you could imagine it might be. So um, you might want to leave it in log form for an exact value, just like you might want to leave the area of a circle as twenty five pi instead of multiplying twenty five by three point one four blah blah blah. Okay, so exact value versus approximation. We know that. Um, it's going to be equal 3, we know that eventually, but it, um, what we would need to do then of course is somehow use our calculator to, to solve it if we didn't know um, that x was going to be equal to 3. So we would uh, put log base 464 into our calculator, which sounds fantastic except for the fact that many scientific calculators don't have a log base 4. They have a log button, but they don't have a log base 4 button. Which just lets, leads me to just um, finish off by talking about some notation here. So, if I see log x, let's say the log of a thousand. Um, if I don't see a base down here, so there's no base between the word log and the number, and the brackets might not be there either. If I just see log a thousand, then it is understood to be a base 10 logarithm. So log of a thousand is the same as log base 10 a thousand, or log base 10 bracket a thousand. They're all equivalent. Okay, so no base means it is assumes that it is a base. The reason why is because base 10 is so common in scientific calculations that um, rather than writing it all the time, we just take it as granted. It's, it's basically the equivalent of square roots being so um, common that we don't write the square root, the number 2 in a square root symbol. Same reason. It's just so common. There's one other really common base, and I'm not going to go through what it means yet, but just in case you see it on your calculator, you might see the following thing on your calculator, log base e. Now e is a special number. It has a special uh, has special properties, and it is really common in uh, natural 
so calculations of the natural world that E is used quite frequently as well in exponential stuff. So log base E of, I'll just pick a number, of 50 might be written like that or it might be written like that. Now that is an L there, LN. Sometimes it's called cursive like that, LN 50. So N, L for log, N for natural. It's called the natural logarithm. Oops, it'd be good if I could spell, couldn't it? Natural logarithm. Um, and we don't have to stress about it too much at the moment, but just it's just a different base, right? Um, base E, and E is a particular number like pi, as in, like a special number, so is E. Okay, and so commonly used that it's got its own name, natural logarithm. So this is a base 10 logarithm, just called a log. So if you think, think back to the um, earlier examples in this video, where I took the log of both sides, I... Uh, made sure that I had a 10 to the power of for that reason because that's what I was talking about, a base 10. Um, but then uh, later on I had log base 2 or log base 4 or log base 3 and those examples I had to write in the base um, explicitly uh, so that we knew that it was specifically to that base. Your calculators will um, have the ability to um, calculate log base 10 and log base E. Um, if it's a scientific calculator, it will have a log button. Some more advanced calculators will allow you to calculate log base anything. Um, but don't worry, if your calculator doesn't allow you to calculate log base anything, there is a special rule that you will learn which allows you to change any log uh, of any base to a log base 10, which means your calculator um, only needs to, um, really to have log base 10. So that's it for this video. It's a little bit of a long video because it's an explanation one, but it's going to be really important. Um, in the next video, I'm going to start talking about logarithm rules. Um, these rules sort of complement the rules that we have for index laws. Um, so we're going to have a look at those particular ones and um, do a bit more of an exploration of those um, values in class. That's it.